Hello, I've got all my paintbrushes out today and I thought I'd go through some of the qualities of them. I've put them into different groups so that I can compare the broader characteristics so I won't be using every single one of these. And this is where I keep all my paintbrushes. It's just like a clear acrylic, probably some kind of makeup holder. I think paintbrushes are quite a hard thing to talk about because unless you can actually feel them and compare different paintbrushes, it's hard to know exactly what we mean. I was thinking about how I find it useful to think about paintbrushes. And so I've done this chart where I'm going to plot different paintbrushes to try and give you an idea about them. And on one axis, I've got how much water a paintbrush will hold. And on the other, kind of how much softness or control over the bristles you have. So at the bottom here, you've got very, very springy snap back paintbrushes. And then at the top, you've got very soft and kind of mould into a shaping, kind of a bit harder to control paintbrushes. This is not very scientific. There's lots of paintbrush brands that I don't have and haven't come across. For what it's worth, this is just my opinion on my brushes and hopefully it will help somebody. So I'll have a play with the brushes and I'll refer back to this chart and plot on the where I think the brushes go. So I figured I'm going to use a lot of paper today and I didn't want to use up sheets and sheets of good watercolour paper. So I'm just using the back of watercolour paper that I've done various swatches on in my other videos. And I've taken a watercolour that I don't use very much. It's a Jackson's Hooker's Green and I've mixed up a big bowl of uh, liquid watercolour so that I'm using paint mixture of the same dilution for every single paintbrush. I'll mainly be looking at the suitability of brushes for watercolour because that's mainly what I've been concentrating on lately. So I'll start off with the Princeton Neptune brushes. I'm relatively new to these. I bought these brushes in two sets of four and then one individual brush. These are imitation squirrel and the property of squirrel hair is that it holds an awful lot of water and it's quite soft. So here's a number 12 round brush. It feels very soft and velvety. So I think what I'll do I'll dip the brushes into the water, gently draw them across the side once, and I'll do that for every time I use a paintbrush so it's as similar as possible. So it's just a juicy, rich brush. holds an awful lot of water. You see it's starting to run out now. But you can see that there's not much snap in the bristles. They've kind of moulded into that shape that I was painting this last line in. So on my chart then, I'm just going to put a box up here. And I'm going to put squirrel. So either real squirrel or squirrel mix or faux squirrel. If that's what the paintbrush is being described as, then generally it'll be something that holds a lot of water and is quite soft and sort of moulds to the paper shape a bit. So we'll put... Um, My writing is even worse than normal today. I've got a saw right where the pen sits. So Princeton Neptune is definitely up in this top corner of soft and holding a lot of water. And I've got various things. This is a Motler, like a thin wide brush, square wash brush. There's another larger square wash. Quill, hold a beautiful large amount of water. And then the smallest I've got is a number four round.
So even for quite a small brush, it still holds a decent amount of water. And you can see that the, the bristles have kind of moved shape. You can still get some accuracy with these brushes. I think they, they still come to quite a good tip. But you've just got to be aware of what the brush tip's actually doing and how you're manipulating it and which way around you're holding it. So next up, I've got my silver black velvet brushes and these have some real squirrel hair in. I bought these quite a few years ago now and I wasn't really aware of what things were made of then. I just saw that lots of people were using these and thought I'd give them a go. So I'm trying to move away from real animal hair brushes. But just to show you how these, how these operate. So this is the t number 12 silver black velvet and I previously used the number 12 Princeton Neptune. Again, it's got that absolutely lovely fullness and softness. And I could probably, probably keep going. So I think the silver black velvets do hold um, a bit more water and are a bit softer than the Princeton Neptunes but they are both wonderful to use and kind of fulfill the same function and you can see again the silver black velvet nib has kind of molded i find that with the silver black velvets this is the number four that although they're soft i'm quite happy with the point that i get on them and you can do quite good detailed work as well still. And though you don't have quite the level of control as a stiffer brush. You can see it's kind of the tips bending one way. So I need to compensate that for that when I go back in. But it is lovely to have a smaller size brush holding a good amount of water. And you can use it for quite fine work without the water running out too quickly. So on my chart here, it's up in the squirrel corner and I'd say it's even softer and holds maybe a bit more water than the Princeton Neptunes. So I'll just put it in this top corner. And then next up, I've got two more synthetic squirrel type brushes, and they are the Escoda Ultimo. And I've got the size 10 travel brush and then size 6. So hold a good amount of water, a very mouldable bristles and I've really enjoyed using this travel brush. I don't think they hold quite as much water as the silver black velvets, but they're, diff they're definitely in the same kind of category as the Princeton Neptunes and the silver black velvets. I'll pop them up here. I do think they're very soft, but maybe don't hold quite as much water. So. And next up, I've got some Princeton Aqua Elite brushes. And these all came in a set together. Now, I think these are more designed to simulate sable hair. And the properties of sable are that they still hold a lot of water, 
but that you have a bit more control with them. There's a little bit more snap to the bristles. So I'll use this number eight round. So they do hold a good amount of water. There is a little bit of moulding going on with the bristles, but there does seem to be more accuracy and the, the point kind of comes back to itself more than with the squirrel brushes. So if I did, it's my number eight silver black velvet. If I do that similar thing there, I can kind of simulate the same thing, but the brush doesn't have quite as much regularity in coming back to its shape. So coming to my chart, I'd say that well kind of around here maybe holding less water than the squirrel so across that way a little bit that's the sable and faux sable kind of arena now I haven't got well, I haven't got a large sable brush that I can do a true comparison for you, but this is just kind of my understanding of roughly where the different types of brushes lie. So I saw these brushes being used somewhere on TikTok fairly recently, and they were just advertised as uh, Series 402, and I didn't realise that they were actually a sable blend. So quite soft, holds a reasonable amount of water. And you can see there is there is some moulding of the bristles. So the most similar brush that I've got to that is the Princeton Aqua Elite, which is kind of a sable imitation. So I'll just show you the same thing with this one. I don't think the Aqua Elite holds as much water. I oh, know. And you kind of get reasonable accuracy in the bristles kind of coming back together. And you can get really fine lines. And you could do that for quite a while because of the good water retention. Shall I just try that same thing with the Aqua Elite? Okay, I can't get quite as fine a point on it. So where would I put them on here? This is the Rosemary & Co. Sable Blend Series 402. Definitely more firm than these squirrels that we've been looking at. Don't think it holds quite as much water. So I'm popping it over here. And then I'd say I'm putting the Princeton Aqua Elites here. Hold a bit less water, somewhere in the middle of very soft and super springy. So next up, I have got a lot of acrylic tipped brushes from Rosemary & Co. I 
bought these quite a few years ago when I wanted to get into watercolour and I didn't really have a clue about brushes and these weren't very expensive and they look nice but actually I think part of the reason I didn't really get into watercolours back then is because these brushes aren't that great for watercolour in my opinion. So I've got some quite a few from the ivory range um, some from the Shiraz range. Um, ivory, ivory. They might just be all ivory. No, um, there's a couple of evergreen as well. And I didn't find a huge amount of difference between the ivory, the Shiraz and the evergreen really. Um, so I got a variety of different shapes and sizes. So the numbers on these Rosemary & Co brushes don't really correspond with numbers from the other ranges so much. So this is a number five pointed round. And compared to the brushes I've been using so far, the bristles feel significantly stiffer and hold significantly less water. So there's not much more in there. Um, they're kind of similar size brushes, just as a comparison. So this is the Princeton Aqua Elite. So a fair bit more water. And then this is the Escoda Ultimo. And on the softer brushes, you can see that the bristles kind of splay out more. They, they seem fuller and seem to almost expand with the water in them. So yeah, the acrylics stiffer and hold much less water. So I did not enjoy my watercolour experience using these brushes and now I keep them for using with gouache and acrylic paints. Though actually these round ones I don't tend to use very much at all. I quite like the ivory flat and this is quite, you've got quite a nice control because it is so stiff. And so for smaller little squared off areas, this is actually quite a nice little brush. You've got good control of the angles and the corners because the bristles are staying in place pretty well. Whereas when I'm using a much softer imitation squirrel, a squared brush, I've got some control, but The, the brush is just softer and not as accurate. I did like the Rosemary & Co uh, smaller brushes for detailed work. I found the, the tips quite nice. And the tip holds its shape quite nicely. So yeah, I've got on quite well with these small Rosemary & Co brushes. This one's evergreen, but I've also enjoyed using the ivory small one as well. So talking about um, small brushes now, these are some of the smallest that I've got. Whilst the Rosemary & Co acrylics are, are quite good, I came across the Proline Pro Art ones, and I think these are probably my favourite small detail brushes. They've got really good control on the tips, but they, they do seem to hold a decent amount of water for the size of them as well. So that's the size one. So the, the floor, four slash zero is the smallest I've got. It's absolutely tiny. And 
obviously it's not going to hold a huge amount of water. It's still not bad. So you definitely want a bit of spring in the brushes this size, well I do, so that you've got a bit of control for something that tiny. Let's go back to the chart. So it holds little water and snaps back and is springy. I'd say that kind of as a broad generalisation, that's kind of acrylic brushes. So here I'd be putting um, the Rosemary & Co Ivory um, and Shiraz, those kind of ones. I think some people might just call these synthetics as well. So then there's a couple of other acrylics that I'd like to point out. And one is the Betty Hayways brush. I've only got this one, but I just found it quite a nice. I like the tip size on it. Sometimes brushes can be almost too pointy for me, but this has quite a blunt, a blunt tip. And it's just quite a nice colouring in reliable, gets back to its shape kind of brush. Again, it doesn't hold as much water as the imitation squirrel or sables. But for small work that you just want a reliable nib, that's not a bad one. And then I've also got a couple of Escoda Perlas. And these, they, they start off as white bristles. Uh, White Torre, I think it might be called. Um, but yeah, just synthetic brush. They don't hold gallons of water, but they actually feel quite soft for a synthetic. You can see they're a lot kind of more gentle than the Rosemary Co ones I showed you. This is an ivory from Rosemary & Co. It's just kind of stiffer and scratchier. In fact, the perla just has that gentleness on the paper. And it's also very good for just detailed work because you can rely on the tip to stay going in the direction you want it to. If you were going around, say, some petal edges and filling in a background or something, You've got that control there, and it you know, and it holds a a fair bit of water. And then I've got a smaller size. Let's go to Perla as well. I'm just comparing this Betty Hayways and the Perla. They're not a million miles apart, but I think the Betty Hayways is a little bit softer. But yeah, I do think they're genuinely quite nice brushes, depending on what your job is. Okay, a bit better than the Ivory Shiraz and Shiraz, so I put it more on the holding more water side here. And a little bit softer. So we had the Betty Hayways. And we had the Escoda Perla. Then another brush I got fairly recently is the 
Princeton Snap Brush. So white synthetic, well it was white, <laughs> and I'd seen this being used for doing like florals and it, I was intrigued by it. And the first thing I noticed about it is that it was much softer and held more water than I was expecting from a white kind of acrylic brush. And you can see it does, it's got a bit of that mould, moulding the bristles to it. So yes, this is the Princeton Snap brush, which it was softer and held more water than I was imagining. But just to compare it to the 12 Princeton Neptune. So yeah, you can see the Neptune, whoops, sorry, I that shot there. You can see that Neptune does hold a lot more water. But the snap is nice. And I'm quite looking forward to doing some bold florals with it. Because you do have this ability to snap back up in a quite a controlled way. Let's do that with the Princeton. <laughs> yeah, I just, I mean, I'm not super skillful, but that's kind of demonstrating the difference in what the bristles are trying to do. Could probably do it better than that, but. Yeah. It's easier to have that smooth control with the snap brush than with the Neptune brush because the bristles are that much softer. So yeah, the snaps, the snap seems like a pretty interesting fun brush. If huge water retention isn't your main priority for it. So where would, I think I'm going to put the snap up here really. It certainly doesn't hold as much water as the Aqua Elite, I don't think. It's definitely got more softness about it, maybe here. Sorry, these bits of paper really are scruffy. Um, and then we've got my most kind of acrylic -y acrylics. I don't know how to put it really. These are really robust really kind of sturdy brushes. And they haven't got any softness at all. They don't mold at all. I just use them for acrylics, really kind of rough mark making and moving paint around with them. And these are the Rosemary & Co short round series 2095 and I think I've got I've got three th those in three different sizes there's a smaller one the bristles don't hold together nicely they're, they're kind of just like scrubby brushes so you can get different kind of textures with them Good for an entirely different purpose. And there's a couple of other ones that I use for acrylic as well. I've got this Jackson's Pro Krill one. And it holds almost no water really. And it's just kind of a very scrubby one. I'm not, I don't particularly like that brush to be honest. I've not used it very much. And then these Rosemary Co Eclipse Filberts. Again, these are just for acrylics. Um, they have a little bit more finesse about them than these than these series 2095s. And I've just got those in two sizes. And then I've got this Raphael synthetic super heavy body paint. So it's for dealing with thick paint. 
and I actually quite like this one. It's got a really good amount of spring and snap. You can, I can see how it will really hold its own against thick paint. But it's also got a little bit of finesse. The bristles hold themselves together quite nicely. And it can maybe do a little bit more detailed acrylic stuff than, you know, with this kind of one. So, uh, Rosemary & Co. So series 2095 is really down this bottom corner. And that's these ones. And I can't, can't see the name of it. Raphael Textura. Probably put it up here. Doesn't feel like it holds a lot of paint, very robust bristles, but a little bit softer than these other acrylics that I looked at. And then I'm not going to add all of these to the chart, but I've got a handful of other synthetics. Um, let's just tap this out. Got Royal and Langenickel Crafter's Choice. This is quite a nice soft synthetic. And it kind of reminds me of the Princeton Snap, uh, like the softness of that. And it's quite a nice, it's quite a nice, enjoyable brush. It doesn't hold gallons of water, but quite pleasant. Um, what I've got here, I've got two horrible rubbishy travel brushes. I think this one came with the portable painter and this one came in a uh, Cotman Windsor and Newton set and I just I don't like either of them at all. They, they hold almost no water and for a watercolour set that's not yeah they're not great. I just keep them around because they look cute. I tried this um, Artica Torre white synthetic from Jackson's and it kind of looks nice but I don't like it as much as I liked the Escoda Perla. I think they're equivalents. But the Artica Torre just isn't as nice, doesn't operate as nicely, doesn't hold as much water. Uh, I've got a couple of the filberts from Rosemary & Co. They don't hold very much water, I don't really use them very much. This is quite a nice little brush, this came with the Stabilo woody pencils and it's quite a robust brush. This is very thirsty paper by the way. I was pleasantly surprised when the Stabilo Woodies came at the niceness of the brush that came with them. Then I've got this Tintoretto. This came with my A Gallo paints. It's a travel brush. And it's incredibly soft and holds a lot of water. But the problem I had with it is that the point was so sharp on it, um, it didn't work well with how I work at all. I just felt like everything was dominated by this massive, long, sharp point, um, which I thought was a shame because the brush itself was really lovely, the quality of the bristles. So what I did, I, um, I've just kind of carefully snipped away at the end. So... Oh, shit. So I'd kind of fan it out like that and then just use scissors to snip away at the end point and then fan it out again in a different position and just round it again and keep doing that till I've got a relatively even, evenly rounded off tip. 
And actually, I really like this brush now. It's kind of got a much blunter end to it now. Then another Royal Langanickel. Um, I think these are the kind that you just get in packs quite cheaply. And it's a, you know, it's a reasonably decent standard acrylic brush. Doesn't hold much water. Quite nice and keeps its shape well. And this is a PBO a glass and china brush. And I think it's the only dagger brush that I've got. And it's actually surprisingly soft. And holds a relatively okay amount of water. So yeah, that's the PBO one. And then this was an Escoda Barocca synthetic. This came in, I think there were six brushes in the set. And it's okay, it just seems like a fairly standard acrylic brush. So that's the Barocca. I'm just comparing it to a similar sized Rosemary & Co Ivory. Yeah, so the Barocca is definitely a lot nicer than the Rosemary & Co Ivory in terms of kind of smoothness, the bristles keeping together nicely. Just less coarse bristles really, though that might be a quality you want of the ivory for it to be more kind of coarse. And then I've got this brush that I got from Timu. Um, I'm not, I made the decision not to buy any more things from Timu because it seems like they might have quite questionable practices in where some of their products come from. Anyway, a while back I got this brush and I think it's just a copy of the silver black velvet brush. All my writing's worn off the silver black velvet now. And I wasn't expecting very much from it, but it is actually quite a nice brush. It's quite soft, the bristles hold very nicely together and it's actually not a million miles different from my um, actual black velvet brush and then I've got a number of brushes that are kind of long slim ones so an ivory rigger so Winsor Newton synthetic sable rigger, an old Dale Rowney one, and then this isn't a rigger, but it's a Rosemary Co series two three zero, and I'll just quickly show you um, how these work and the comparison between those. So this is uh, the Winsor Newton rigger. And I had some problems with the bristles not lying together very well, and I think I chopped one or two off in the end. And so I've got it, I don't, so I don't totally love it, but I've got it to the point where I have used it for doing really fine details on actually some rigging of a boat I painted. The ivory rigger, this is the stiffer synthetic that I was talking about. And I don't like it at all because the paint just runs out super fast and it doesn't get that thin in the first place so I'm not even sure why I've still got that one because I don't use it. And then this is a Dale Rowney one. Sorry these samples are a right mess. So that's a much nice, it's, although it's larger it's still pretty good and holds a decent amount of water. And actually this Rosemary Co Series 230 has been pretty good. Let me go this way now. Although it doesn't have the length of the riggers, it has quite nicely reliable thin lines. And I quite like it. 
Then second to last, I've got these little baby ones. And this is a Sable Aquafine. I've got a, a Da Vinci Pure Sable. And I've got a Rosemary & Co Pure Sable. So these really, where are we? These really tiny tips. And obviously with that size, even though they're sable, they're not going to hold a ton of water. So that was the Rosemary & Co. This is the Aquafine. Mm. I don't like that Aquafine as much as the sable. It didn't seem to hold as much, even though it's bigger. It's... And then this Da Vinci one. I don't even know where this came from. Yeah, that one's okay. I think of those small ones. Um, the Rosemary & Co. Series 93 was the nicest. Although, again, if it comes to small stuff, I just I do like the Pro Art ones. Then I've got a couple of others. I've got an Escoda Versatil, which. It's okay. It's kind of hard to tell at this size, really. I probably won't end up using that one very much. But then this is, there's this Escoda Prado, which is a tiny little um, flat top brush. And I actually really like this brush. I've been using it for putting windows into little buildings. And it seems to hold a decent amount of water. So yeah, that's the Escoda Prado. I don't know what a larger version of that would be like. And then I've got a very cheap Royal and Langnickel. Just a little tiny one, which is kind of the equivalent of these tiny sables. Yeah, I can't tell a huge amount of difference between those ones, to be honest, and the cheap ones and the um, pure sable. And then the very, very, very last brush I've got. I've got a couple of these. This is an Artist Hake. Hake? I don't know how you pronounce it. And, oh, <laughs> might as well go for it. I guess it's for covering very big spaces. These are pretty inexpensive brushes from Jackson's Art. And to be honest, I mainly use mine just for dusting off pencil crumbs from paper because I don't tend to work very large. So all of the brushes that I've shown you now this is given from the viewpoint of somebody who works mainly with watercolour and works usually no larger than A4 size. So we're talking a fairly small scale. So if I was to get rid of all my brushes and start again, which ones would I have? I would absolutely definitely have one of these brushes. So one of the really soft either squirrel or imitation squirrel brushes. Princeton Neptune, Silver Black Velvet, Skoda Ultimo. I think you can do an awful lot just with one of these brushes. And these two number eights, I think that's quite a versatile size for the smaller scale painting that I've been doing. So yeah, maybe have like a Silver Black Velvet or a Princeton Neptune in a couple of different sizes. And then I'd maybe have one or two synthetics just for more detailed work. So maybe in a Skoda Perla, and then maybe you'd want, you know, a different kind of shaped tip, short flat, 
And then for really small detailed work, I'd probably just go with a pro art pro lean. So yeah, I think the probably grab something like these then. A big fluffy one, a medium fluffy one, a medium detail one, and a small detail one. And for my plein air painting, I've just been taking these two brushes out with me. So that's the number 10 Escoda Ultimo. And I use that for the larger wash areas in my sketchbook. And then this number six black velvet by Silver. And I can just do more de detailed stuff with that one. And if you said to me, which one single brush would I take with me if I was going out and about? Then I think it would have to be the silver black velvet number six. So I've run out of scruffy bits of paper now. But I can go. I mean, I can't cover huge amounts of area, but I can do some kind of wash with it. And then for moderately detailed work, it's pretty good. But then I can also do really quite fine stuff with the number six as well. I haven't tried any of the Princeton Neptune travel brushes. So when my silver black velvets wear out, I'll probably try those out next so that I'm not buying real animal hair. So anyway, that's my brushes and that's my thoughts on my brushes. And like I say, it's quite a subjective subject, but hopefully if you're completely new to brushes, that might give you a little bit of context to put things in. And yeah, and by moving the sable across in that direction a little bit because it doesn't hold quite as much water as the squirrel. Thanks ever so much for watching and hopefully you'll join me next time. Bye!